and to understand how critical moments are and how fleeting a moment can be for a lot of guys. So understanding uh, that just as a perspective from the end of the game. So you know, I know I, it's a bad taste in my mouth and I, you know, uh, I detest it. And I know for next year, uh, you know, a moment comes up like that. It's like, all right, we got to press on the gas pedal. So through that game, of course, we're up. We got up really, really quick. And the thing is, we capitalized on, the, uh, on a few situations. But the thing is, Smith with the Harris County Houston Sports Authority and welcome to tonight's edition of Queued Up. The Q, of course, is for quarantine. We've all been doing it and we're trying to give you a little sports content. And if you've been with us the last couple of weeks, you saw some great conversations with Jeff Bagwell and with Roger Clemens. And up tonight, we have Whitney Merciless. Now, we hope that you are liking us or following us on our Facebook pages or our YouTube channel. If you do that, you're automatically entered to win tickets to the Houston Sports Awards. And for those of you that have submitted your videos uh, in partnership with the Houston Outlaws, our Gaming Together initiative, we'll be showing you our favorites at the end of this episode. So continue to send those in. All right, up tonight, Whitney Merciless. He was a first round pick in 2012 of your Houston Texans. He was the 2019 Sportsmanship Award winner for the Houston Sports Awards. He's a rock boy and he is here, queued up. All right, and joining me now, Whitney Merciless from the Houston Texans here on Queued Up. Whitney, you are queued up at home, quarantined like the rest of the world, basically. Uh, first of all, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty well, is it? to be honest with you. It's actually uh, pretty nice, peaceful. It's nice to be still. <laughs> well, tell us a little bit about what you are doing. What What's keeping you occupied? Give us a little rundown of your day. Well, so you just wake up, go work out. Uh, in a field like right next to my home, that's about it. Uh, and I, I'm just cooking it up. I mean, I got I got my girlfriend here, I got my my dog here, so pretty much not a whole lot going on. Just like reading some scriptures, stuff like that. Uh, just getting getting deep into the Bible and uh, cooking. I've had it to some of my family over uh, just to make sure they're good. And uh, yeah, just finding out some new new like new shows. The Tiger King. Oh, I just dropped that. My bad. My bad. <laughs> Um, yeah, <laughs> you know, this whole quarantine, this whole Zoom thing is all new to me, you know. So, uh, no, but watching some new Netflix shows, the Tiger King, that was really interesting. Dude's like a, uh, a mythical legend. <laughs> I mean, so uh, it, it's been really everybody's into this whole Tiger King thing. In fact, we talked to Jeff Bagwell about it last week. He said the same thing. What is it so riveting about that stupid show? To be honest with you, there is nothing. It is absolutely trash TV. The only reason I watched it was because my boy from L.A. is bored. So he was like, dude, I don't watch trash TV, but you got to check this out. So I did. I was like, it's complete trash. <laughs> but yet you watched it from front to back. Uh, well, I watched about three episodes. That was about it. Yeah. So <laughs> After that, I had to tap the, out. Yeah, I, I wish I would have tapped out. Sadly, I made it to the end. But um <laughs> so tell me what what's been the hardest part of all this for you? Um, hardest part, mm, I'd have to say probably just working out, just like just making sure, just to, and like just wanting to get back into the type of shape that I want to uh, for the OTAs and stuff like that. So I think that's a that's a part. You just got to get real creative. Um, I've been lifting like propane tanks in my backyard, <laughs> so <laughs> using those as weights. I just had a uh, trainer just drop off some weights, physio ball ladders, stuff like that. So I've been uh, I've been running, I've uh, been doing like a lot of body weight, like squats, push ups, pull ups, stuff like that, just to really just uh, just to keep myself strong uh, lately. What do you miss the most about the outside world? Let's see. Ooh, restaurants. I miss going to a good restaurant right now. Have some good wine, good food. Uh, have some great company. That's about it. That's about it. Yeah. Uh, yeah and being able to see my uh, family like 24 <laughs> seven. Yeah. Sometimes that's not so bad, actually. Um, so <laughs> yeah. uh, 
the NFL really has been probably the sport that's been least affected yet because it's for the most part been mm-hmm. your downtime. But, you know, from your perspective, how has it affected you guys, the players, uh, both mentally and physically? You talked a little bit about, you know, working out, having to use propane tanks and stuff. But, you know, depending on how long this goes, how do you see it and how has it affected you guys so far? Well, it affected us, especially like guys who need treatment to go in to work out with the trainers, stuff like that. So I got to do everything more so like by uh, uh, like Zoom, uh, FaceTime, stuff like that uh, for the rehab, uh, really just limit their interactions, stuff like that. Can't go into the facility, use the weights uh, that we usually uh, use. And also, uh, you know, I just don't know about some guys what not, you know, within their mental capacity to, you know, be in solitude completely. So I know around the country, that's really tough for a lot of people and stuff like that. So mentally, it can be uh, very challenging just being in solitude when you're used to, you know, you want to be around people. You want to be, a, you know, we're social creatures uh, at the end of the day. And so uh, I, I see that being a, being very tough. Also, being able to be in the building and uh, lots of film, too. Uh, just getting up some uh, some old clips, just refreshing the mind on some of our offenses, defenses, stuff like that. So. Uh, I'd say mentally in that capacity, physically, of course, it's just workouts. I think um, yeah, guys just got to be able to get get creative. Um, guys are probably be coming back a little slim, to be honest. Man, it could go either way. If you're cook, I mean, you can be pretty chunky when you come back or <laughs> or you can be really skinny when you get back because you were starving and you know how to cook or something like that. <laughs> Yeah, well, you are a cook. I mean, that's one of the things I'm going to get to that a little bit later on. But is that what you're I mean, are you, uh, you know, you're known kind of as a foodie, you like to cook, you like your yep. restaurants, are you you cooking it up there in the kitchen? Oh, for sure. Definitely been cooking it up like crazy for like almost about two and a half weeks. Haven't been eating it, to be honest with you. I just cook it like it's just me and my girl. We, we just like go in there and just come up with some new recipes and just try all kinds of different things. Uh, made some fire bomb whole chicken the uh like about a week ago. Uh made some perfect steaks finally about like about maybe four or five days ago or so. Uh really just uh, started learning how to make uh some Haitian like my, my culture's uh food. So Haitian pate, which is a long, long process. I can't explain it right now, but uh, I'd be able to like send it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so how are you guys like as an organization, how are you staying in touch with either just teammates kind of hanging out and bonding or from a team standpoint? Yeah. So I've got some teammates that live around this neighborhood uh, where I'm at. And so we've been able to just go to a field and just go work out. Um, also coaches, we've been able to, uh, you know, connect via phone, uh, just call up uh, one another and stuff like that and just check up on each other. Uh, you know, FaceTime works. I mean, all you got to do is pick up and it, teach people just how, how to pick up the phone and go call somebody that you care about, <laughs> literally, uh, in these times. So that, that's all we've been doing. You know, and so many athletes are, you know, and, and organizations stepping up. The Texans have stepped up in multiple ways. Janice McNair, you know, $500,000 to uh, f- food banks and, and uh, another $100,000 to the YMCA. And you see individual athletes, Justin Verlander with the Astros doing things, Bregman. I mean, really across the board. And I know you are um, very active with your with your with Mercy uh, Foundation and all the things that you're doing. What, what kind of things are you doing right now that we can potentially help get the message out there, help you. Yeah. You know, the thing is we've been reaching out to our, uh, you know, our partners. So for example, Israel, uh, Easter seals, um, been connecting with them also with, uh, one of our uh, longtime partners as well to, uh, smarty pants Academy. So one of the issues they have had is the school, their school has to still remain open. They're very essential. And so for a lot of the kids with disabilities and stuff like that, parents aren't allowed to go in. They have new protocols as far as like they have a, um, a service, uh, a cleaning service that comes in and wipes down the, uh, all the tables and everything and disinfects everything for the children just to be safe. Uh, one of the issues is getting them supplies. Supplies are really coming scarce now th- nowadays. And so that's one of the focuses that we've been on is just supporting our local partners as far as just allow us to allow us to know what what supplies you need. We're going to go out there. Uh, I personally will be going out there. You know, I've got a mask, I've got gloves and everything just to stay safe, just to go shop for some of these uh, organizations as well, too. I've been able to connect with uh, some kids that I've worked with um, over the last uh, four years, four or five years. So I've been checking up on them, making sure they're good. Uh, just checking up on their families as well too, their mothers and everything. So uh, yeah, it seems like they're doing doing great mentally. Uh, they're just enjoying the time that you know they get the chance to talk to me. And uh, also, I think right now, 
what I want to do is you is really since I've been cooking it up, kind of give them like give these kids and families like kind of like a cool little simple recipe in order to uh you know do something at home or whatnot. So I that that's something that's in the plans right now. All right. Awesome. Yeah. I saw that uh, you had posted, you're doing the walk with me, Houston.org with the Easter seals, a virtual walk. Um, so very cool. So hopefully people mm-hmm. can jump in on that. So, you know, as we're switching to so much virtual, I mean, we're doing this interview, you and I have done a million interviews, never like this before, but this is the reality of, of, of what <laughs> we're doing right now. Um, to think that yeah. the NFL draft is coming up um, online, digital, virtual, just kind of give me your thoughts on that. A, as a, first of all, as a spectator and for you to sit there and watch how it unfolds. But then, you know, it's not that long ago, 2012, when you were drafted a first round pick, I might want to throw that plug in, but what that would be like for these guys mm-hmm. to be doing it this way. And it's going to be completely different. I mean, well, for me, I did it technically virtually in a sense. I mean, I had my family, their coaches, um, who, I, who I went to high school with stuff like that, or coached me in high school. So Technically, I did it virtually, and it was just online. Um, I was uh, I was not invited invited to you know Radio City or whatnot, so it, it was cool just being at home. So a lot of guys are gonna have that. They're gonna, you know you're not gonna have that person who's gonna be sitting in that green room forever. That's gonna drop to this, like the second round or something like that. So that's a big change, but it's completely different because of social distancing, right? So you're not gonna be able to have that huge crowd. It's uh you know it's just you, your family, or something like that, and nobody else. Uh, so it's really different, especially for where the draft is going to be at. No fans, um, no, no the kids are going to be over there. So it's a different feeling. It's the, you know, walking up that on that stage, you're not going to be able to do it. I mean, just, your stage is literally your home. You know, well, well, take us through draft day. I mean, aside from what we're going through now and doing it virtual or whatever, mm-hmm. but, but what's that like? I mean, what's that like for a kid? You're, you're waiting for that call. I know you were surrounded by your family. You had, I mean, it's it just a big day. Mm-hmm. Just, just walk us through what, what, what these kids are looking forward to. Yeah. Um, and draft day was amazing. To be honest, it's like you've been training your entire life, your entire life. Just, uh, you know, have a shot uh, at stardom. Uh, to play with some of your idols uh, that you love so much and watch, uh, you know, since the time you were little and to be able to be on the same field as them is like a pretty, pretty freaking awesome. So uh, that day when my name came across the ticker uh, and Dell announced my name, I was geeked. I mean, everybody in the, in the room was geeked up for sure. No doubt. Cause I couldn't believe it. I was like, man, I'm really going to the NFL. I did. This is unreal. I'm going to be able to get a chance to go in there, not only just as a first round pick, which is really hard to do, um, especially after, you know, being considered as a one year wonder and all that. And now being here for going on nine years, uh, it, it was just truly, truly a blessing. And I was just so thankful and so grateful that, uh, you know, the Texans really just took a chance on me and uh, been here ever since. So, you know, a lot really has gone on with the Texans and you personally in this offseason. season at the end of the year, you um, the Texans brought you back for another four years, uh, your second big contract. What did that commitment mean to you? Man, it meant, it meant everything to me. I had to keep me here. They, they saw the value that I brought to the team, uh, not only as a player, but also as a leader uh, for the locker room in order to drive, uh, you know, everything in order to get to a championship, to be, to be regarded as uh, one of the top candidates to keep around. Uh, was truly, truly tremendous. And I was just super, super thankful for uh, them considering to, you know, keep me and uh, making it happen uh, at that. You know, and to be able to, you know, as much the the roots that you've been talking about that you've established in this community through your foundations and, and just, this is your home for the last, you know, eight years, you're going into your ninth NFL season to have an organization commit to you like you've committed to them. That's got to mean just a lot across the board. Knowing yeah. what a business the NFL is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a cutthroat business. It's one of the uh, most cutthroat businesses in the world, for sure. And so, you know, anything can happen. It, you know, it's like, all right, well, you know, just to put it in, in, in a sense, I mean, you know, you do a great job for them for for any organization for a number of years. But just depending on certain factors and variables, uh, you know, throughout some years or those years, uh, when your contract comes up, you know, sometimes you they're not going to be able to keep you or, you know, you just may not be productive or, you know, X, Y, Z, whatever the case may be. But I mean, it's just keep your head down, just doing the work uh, and just understanding, just keeping the faith that, you know, somebody's going to like you 
and somebody's going to uh, want to keep you around for a, for a while. For me, I'm just thankful that I've been able to stay around with uh, the same franchise uh, for a while. And that's not always the case. You know, you've got, and of course at the Houston Sports Awards, you were honored as Sportsman of the Year and your boys, the Rock Boys, presented that award to you. And then you get into an off season like this, which I know we can go back to that too. But, you know, Barcavius Mingo, he's not here. He's now with Chicago. And, and I think a lot mm-hmm. of people don't always, you know, look, we all know that it's the business of football and that's the way it is. But that's something that you, these are your friends, not just your teammates. Then you've got to watch a guy like that go. What, what you know, when you heard that he was gone and, and leaving, what, how did you feel? Yeah. Uh, you know, since being in here for, since 2012, a uh, lot of that same team that was here in 2012 is gone. And I made some personal relationships then. Um, and I had to really learn, um, you know, when these are uh, like, your, your best boy is going to be gone, whether out of the league or, you know, onto a next team. And because you get caught up in the business of, uh, you know, just life and football and everything, it's just, uh, you know, you got to be able to stay connected. You know, the thing is, we understand uh, we're not going to be able to talk every single day because we got life that's happening and we got, uh, you know, football and responsibilities and all that. But it's it's still it's always, it's always still tough because, you know, you can, you develop a relationship. Um, you get close with some of these guys and you, you know, the rock boys, you know, we're, we're just a strong bond. You know, we just love to rock out on the on field. And, and uh, it's just it, it, it's sad to see those guys go. But you just want the, mo- the most success. Uh, you know, same same with DeAndre. Uh, it, you know, it's sad to see him go. Uh, you know, I had a close relationship with him as well, too. And so, you know, the thing is, you just want the best always for you guys, you know, whether it's here or somewhere else. So when that came about, I mean, and I don't know, I'm not going to as depth as you want to or as you can, but how did that come about for you when you heard about it and what were, what were your thoughts? I'm just saying it on, you know, one of the updates, Bleacher Report or whatnot, and I was just like, oh, well, oh, wow, this, that's happening. That's happening. I had no idea it was going to happen, but, uh, you know, it is what it is, um, you know, all the time. It, you know, it's nothing surprising that throughout the league, you're always going to have some, I mean, look at Brady. You know, he's in Tampa now. So anything can go in this league. Nobody's above anybody or nobody's too good not to uh, not to be cut or to be let go or to be traded or whatnot. So, you know, the thing is, uh, this league is not for long. So your is there anything you can tell us about? I mean, when you after that happened, any conversations you had with DeAndre or, you know, since he's been gone or just, you know, I I know you guys were tight. Um, Just where's where's his head at this point? Well, I hadn't had a conversation with DeAndre yet and whatnot. I've just been waiting for everything to calm down. And I know he's dealing with, uh, you know, all his stuff just to move over. So, you know, family, everything, especially the things going on right now as well, too. So once everything blows over, I'll just be able to connect with him. But, uh, you know, he's good for him. I just know him. He's uh, cool, calm, collected. And the thing is, he, he knows what to do. He, he knows how to go in there, you know, make it like he knows a lot of people around the league. So, of course, he's going to be comfortable. I mean, he's got uh, Larry Fitzgerald over there. So he's going to fit in real, real nice. And uh, he's just going to go out there and he's going to go ball. Now, hopefully he doesn't ball against us like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no doubt. So talking about your – you mentioned the Rock Boys, and we brought it up a couple of times. Where did that, where did that stem from? How did you guys – kind of the, the genesis of how that started? Well, it was started at training camp last year, to be honest. It, so I want to say Scar started it. So Scarlett, he started it and then I joined in and it was just, it just became like a thing. So every time it was like, anytime we get a sack, pretty much we just going to rock out. You know, it just started as like something completely stupid and didn't think it was going to catch a uh, catch fire or anything like that. And we just knew we just want to carry it over to the, uh, uh, to the season because we didn't have anything and we just wanted to have fun. Uh, we didn't care whether it was going to like, you know, be blown up or anything like that. It was just our, our thing. That was it. And, uh, it, and it became bigger than what it, we thought it was going to be, especially when we got to the, into the playoffs. So it was awesome. It was awesome. Going back to that award show. Now the Rock Boys did fail a little bit. Had a, I had to come up and save them a little bit because uh, somebody got nervous up there. <laughs> yeah, somebody did. We're not going to name any names, but no, um, no, no. That, that that was pretty cool. Um, <laughs> so how important is that chemistry? You know, you guys, you've got your thing going on and you have fun and, and you look over, you know, across town, you see, you know, the Astros and the, the chemistry that they had and, and how f- much fun they seem to be having on the, on their way to their championship. How important is that in a locker room? 
Chemistry is everything. I mean, you know, when you come up with something simple as just the rock boys, you can just rock out. It builds just a, uh, a trust, uh, like a trust factor between you guys. Also a deeper, a deeper connection with you guys, because you don't understand that, you know, at the end of the day, it's a game. We just love playing it and we're not afraid to have fun. Uh, just go out there, just do something stupid and have everybody join in. Not, and the thing is, Taken away from like you know those set the 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 spotlight on a single person when they make a play, it's like no, there was eleven other guys that help that like make this play happen. So how are we going to be able to bring everybody together to celebrate this success on the field? So literally, it, it, that's how it came about. It's like man, shoot, forget the single sub or celebration, Let's celebrate as a, as a team, as a family. So that's pretty much how we wanted to go go about it. And then you see over on the other side of the ball, you see Deshaun. I mean, even Deshaun, when he does something, you see him rocking out on his guitar. That That's pretty cool, too, because he's he's not even uh, a rock boy. Look, he's an honorary rock boy, no question. I mean, if he want to be the lead rock, you know, a guitarist or a lead singer, I mean, we'll take that for sure. I mean, we just lost the member. So we'll take, I mean, look, he can be full time if he wants it. <laughs> So t talk a little bit about him. I mean, look, he's not on the same side of the ball as you are or whatever, but he's a leader on your team. Mm -hmm. Clearly, um, you know, the eyeballs on this guy and not only in Houston, but across the league. Um, just what, what he brings to the, the club, what he brings to the city and what you see day to day with this guy. Hey, yeah, exactly what you said. He's a leader. I mean, not just on the, like, on the field, but off the field as well, too. Uh, started his foundation. He's giving back, especially during this time as well, too. Um, he's a guy. He, he's a guy of his faith, uh, a man of faith, I'll say. And he really does just truly, genuinely love people. And he does, you know, just he goes out there. He goes out his way to help so many, so many in this community. So it's really awesome to see that. And then also it, just how special he is on the field. It's amazing. I mean, I think it was the Bills game when two, two people were like about to go cream him. Yeah, just did a. Uh, full 180 or 360, whatever it was, lost the ball, made it happen. He's been doing that forever. I mean, he started catching the name Houdini because he can make things happen. So he's a very calm, cool, collected kid, especially when he first came in here as a rookie. Seeing that was just absolutely amazing because uh, you don't see that typically in somebody who is new to, you know, the speed of the game you know, on this on this level. And uh, when he came in, he just uh, he, he just took the bull by the horns and really just uh, made the game his and just went out there and just played. Uh, you know, bad things happen. He gets frustrated about that, but he lets it go and moves on to the next play and just goes uh, j just goes out there and just has fun. That's it. So finish going through, you know, he, a healthy season last year. You guys ended up 10 and six, of course, winning that first playoff game against uh, the Bills. Kansas City, not obviously. Uh, ending the season of course no season is going to end well unless you win the super bowl there's always going to be that it didn't end well for us talk a little bit about that kansas city game and just kind of you know the roller coaster emotions uh, of that day yeah um you know it, it's something that we're okay look it had to happen you just get a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths to understand how close we were and how much the road was set up for us at that time and to understand how critical moments are and how fleeting a moment can be for a lot of guys. So understanding uh, that just as a perspective from the end of the game. So you know, I know I, it's a bad taste in my mouth and I, you know, uh, I detest it. And I know for next year, uh, you know, a moment comes up like that. It's like, all right, we got to press on the gas pedal. So through that game, of course, we're up. We got up really, really quick. And the thing is, we capitalized on, the, uh, on a few situations. But the thing is, is to, to be able to sustain. And so uh, I'm not even going to say, like, I don't, I don't know about, like, you know, whether we let off a gas pedal or whatnot, whatever the situation was, but we, we made mistakes on our part. And so the biggest thing for us, we've just got to, when, when the situation happens like that, we got to be able to suppress on the jugular and just go. That's it. And make sure we seal out a game like that. Just make sure we make it to the next round because it, that road could have been set up for us uh, very nicely. But uh, again, it was a bad taste that was left in a lot of people's mouths. And, you know, it's just the wonder of like, I can't believe the season is over. Now it's like, all right, we got the team. We can go make this happen. So we, uh, I trust that a lot of guys on the team are definitely going to go make it happen for sure. 
it, I mean, not that any one person can do anything. Clearly, it's it's you're you're one player. But you know, when you when it left a bad taste, and you know, what part of it keeps you up at night? If you if you had to do something over again as a team, or is there anything you could do over again that could have changed that outcome, in your opinion? Um, let's see. Me personally, probably uh, uh, probably just going out there and just saying, "Hey, man, look, we can't do, we can't let up." Just yelling it out. We can't let up. We got to go. We got to go no matter what. And we got to press on the gas pedal even harder because we can't let anybody get back in this game, especially uh, having the quarterback that they had. Um, also, let's see, you know, probably just being able to play a little bit better in that game. Um, you know, there's times where, you know, I would get a little close or whatnot. Uh, just probably recognizing a few re- uh, uh, formations just a little bit better. So it's yeah, just something to keep in mind for next time. So looking forward already to this next season, obviously you want to turn the page, get that taste out of your mouth. Um, a lot, as we've already talked about throughout the course of this has gone on in the off season, but as you are approaching the season and assuming things are up and going as they should be, what are you most looking forward to and what can we expect to see from this, from this team? I'm most looking forward to uh, how this team is going to shape up after this off season. It's going to be very, very interesting. Um, Seeing the kids' type of chemistry, the type of guys that we, uh, you know, we, we've brought into the locker room now uh, by the time we get into training camp and uh, seeing how this team shapes up, especially after this time, you know, this whole social distancing thing uh, that's going on. Because usually OTAs allows us to, you know, get the rookies in, get the new guys in, break them into the system and stuff like that. So it's going to be interesting. Um, and I think it's going to be a great season um, for us, it, it, you know, just to understand everybody has to be professional at the end of the day. Um, and understand how to lock in on their job and everything. And I, and that's exactly what we have in the locker room. You know, and, and I don't want to put words in your mouth by any stretch on this, but, you know, with whether it's um, the DeAndre, DeAndre Hopkins trade or just off-season moves or whatever, I mean, across the league you hear whether it's, you know, Coach O'Brien taking some heat from some of this stuff, or the organization. You're, these people aren't in that locker room. These people aren't in that building every single day. You're a guy that is there. Mm-hmm. You're a guy that's a part of it. Is there anything that sort of you can sort of, I don't know, give us some insight or speak to that as to some of those moves and, and how you guys as other players see that? Uh, you know, the thing is, <laughs> as funny as, I, uh, as I'm saying, it's above my pay grade. You know, the thing is, it's like, it's like we're the coaches. We make decisions. Players play. Um, and so they're – they're pretty much chief of staff to oversee what, you know, how to shape the team, uh, create the best competitive environment in order to create the best team in order to go win a Super Bowl. And, uh, you know, whatever they feel that is best, whether it's a, a tough decision, an unpopular decision, and that's what leadership is at the end of the day. Nobody's going to like you. Not everybody's going to like you. Some people may. Some maybe other people might not. But based off the decisions that you make on a daily basis, that's what we have to face with uh, on a daily basis when we play the game and make decisions that we do on the field as well. So for them, uh, you know, they, they just made the best move uh, uh, yeah, as possible. And the thing is, we just got to ride with it. We're going to ride with it at the end of the day, because as it, still at the end of the day, it's our team. Uh, we said, we're the ones who are still here and we got to go make something happen and we go make some shake. And like I said, I want to see the success of everybody on this team, guys here who are here or there, um, especially here. And I just want to see them just win uh, all day long. And success, obviously, for the team is to win and ultimately a Super Bowl. What does success look like for you individually as you enter this season? Uh, success? Man, uh, gosh, my, my, my term of success is just, uh, you know, just being happy in life, to be honest with you. Um, you know, I'm happy I'm, I'm, I'm able to play the game. Um, I'm happy I'm going to be here for, you know, another four years or so, however long, you know. Uh, as far as the business that we talked about. And uh, I just want to get as many sacks, go ball out, help the team win, go get a, go get a Super Bowl. Um, I want to talk a little bit about going a little uh, – we, we've got a little game we put, play on the show called Q19, 19 questions, and I'll finish with that. But before I do, I want to talk a little bit about your family. You've got – um, your parents, you mentioned them earlier, and their Haitian cooking and the Haitian roots. Mm-hmm. Um, can you just talk a little bit about – um, sort of your background. I think a lot of people maybe don't know that. Um, yeah, I know you grew up in Akron, Ohio, but how important is that? And I know that 
you know, Haiti went through uh, some, and a lot of athletes stepped up to help Haiti uh, last year, a couple years ago, just how much that's still a part of you and, and your, your culture and your life. I, it's very, very, very important. I mean, it's my roots. It's uh, to understand where I truly do come from. I come from a very, very humble background. Um, you know, a lot of people talk about coming out of the mud. Well, <laughs> well, seeing where my parents came, came from, they, they came from much worse. And, uh, you know, just, um, yeah, it, it's such a, like a p- impoverished country. It's just, it's, a, it's absolutely incredible to see, um, uh, a country neglected for years, for years. Um, you know, just because it was, uh, you know, just go back to, to some history is the first, uh, first country to, um, black country, uh, to become independent from the world. And so it was shunned. So it's kind of like the people are just like very much shunned, you know, but they have so much joy. And I, I love going back to visit my cousins and all that. Um, I'm seeing that my parents, they had nothing, zero. I mean, uh, maybe just a shack just to, you know, stay in and all that. And I'm thankful, forever grateful for them making the journey here uh, to give my brother and my sister and I uh, a chance uh, to have a successful life and just be in it. Now it's awesome to be able to pay that back to them, uh, make sure they're good because they worked the, to their bone, you know, through skin, nail, all that blood, tears, everything. And uh, just to see where they come from, it's always kept me humble. And I, I love uh, I love my country. I love my people. I love my family. Um, I love our traditions and all that. Uh, now, no matter how broken the country is, but also just maintaining that faith, um, you know, such as a young child and understanding how that faith, that hope really holds a lot of things together, especially especially in a time like this, which, you know, for me, this is nothing. Um, seeing where my family have grown up and all that and just not have nothing and could be in very much a despair. Um, you know, for me, this is a great time just to be still, uh, just to enjoy the things that, you know, I love so much, uh, in my life and just be able to, you know, get deeper into my faith as well too, and just not have anything on my plate. So, you know, just learning traditions of food, um, hearing the stories that my parents have grown up, uh, doing, you know, just the mischief and stuff like that. It's always awesome. And, uh, just to be able to hear how, how well the country was when they were growing up. Um, you know, yeah, of course they've gone through some disasters before, but nothing like, uh, nothing like within these last like 10, 10, eight years or so. So it's, uh, it's been, it's very humbling and uh, I'm just so thankful. Uh, I'm, I'm thankful that God created me to be Haitian (laughs) at the end of the day. Well, and you are, you're, where does that come from? You are, you come across as, as humble. You talk about how humbled you are, all your things that you do to give back. Did that come from your parents? Where, where where does that come from for you? Yeah. Yeah. It comes from my parents. Um, you know, they, so my mom, my dad, they get, they gave everything, uh, you know, they were in church all the time, uh, when they were living in Haiti and all that. And they, I mean, they were down to the bottom dollar if they even had a dollar and donated all that to the church, uh, you know, to give you 10%, you're tied. And, uh, my mom would give everything that she had not knowing that where her next meal was going to come from. And, uh, every time she has been blessed, my dad has been blessed. Uh, 10 times over. And so when they, uh, you know, finally, when they came to the country and all that, uh, my, because of their faithful, you know, their, their, their faithfulness to the church, to God and everything, um, they have been blessed 10 times over more, uh, more so like a hundred times over. It's just like things have came in abundance for them. And so, uh, even that, just that as a little child, my mom has instilled it in the, that in, through me and my siblings as well. Um, you know, the thing is, uh, you know, a lot of people have it like, I understand who I am through, you know, through the blood of Jesus Christ and all that. And so I understand my identity and I will always say it like at the end of the day, if you were giving me every single other religion out there, I would still choose Christianity at the end of the day. Um, because I just understand the hope, uh, you know, the grace of forgiveness and stuff like that. And everything has, everything is very similar. We just have to be able to see that and be able to connect with that, uh, all together, uh, throughout this entire world. And this is the perfect week to do that as well. And you just locked up on me. Are you still there? Being the best version of ourselves um, uh, for each other, especially now. All right. Well, well said, my friend. All right. You ready to play a little Q19? Let's do it. All right. All right. Well, this is a good one for you. Favorite food to eat? 
Favorite food. Ooh, that's tough. All right. Um, Not your favorite dish to cook. All right. I'm a, favorite dish to eat. Favorite dish to eat. Okay. All right. I'm going to go with, uh, it's called, a, it's a Haitian dish. Now there you ask me. Uh, it is called, well, what uh, Haitian patties. It's called yes. pate. Patties, of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For the win. Might as well just drop them off right there. Uh, um, I got you. <laughs> uh, you're also a wine connoisseur. Your favorite wine. Favorite wine. That is very, very tough. Also, I would have to say, ooh, it's a, right now. It's this one called. It's out of Burgundy. It's called uh, Claude de Roulette. It is absolutely awesome. Very. It's a cheap price point. Um, they make Magnums, 1.5 liters, uh, for 60 bucks. And you can go out there and go get it. It's amazing. So Claude de Roulette. I was hoping it'd be a pate, Patricia, patty. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, your favorite movie of all time. Favorite movie of all time. Mm. Ooh, gosh. Let me see. I'm going to have to go with, uh, <laughs> it's so bad. It's wrong. I'm probably not supposed to say this, but it's called How High with um, Meth Man and Red Man. <laughs> you don't know that one. Uh, yeah. All right. What, what kind of music do you listen to? Uh, I listen to just about everything except for country music, to be honest with you. Okay. Other than uh, Tiger King, what have you been binge watching here while you've been queued up? Binge watching, uh, gosh, just got done watching, uh, it's called Rhythm and Flow, but I've been watching a whole bunch of movies, some weird movies. <laughs> All right. What's, uh, what's on your bucket list? Bucket list? Um, let's see. Organize my home. <laughs> organize my home right now. Uh, organize my emails. Um, let me see what else. And come up with some new great challenging recipes as well, too. Probably going to start cooking some French food. What about when you get out of this confinement? What's on your worldly bucket list? What do you want to do that maybe you've never done? Okay. Um, let me see. I just want to go back. Probably backpacking for about a month. <laughs> like. Next year, off season, probably just take an entire month off and just go travel and just go see the world. Who's the toughest quarterback to take down? Toughest quarterback to take down? I'd have to say, it's between, oh, ooh, 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 that's tough. That's between Andrew Luck and Cam Newton. Pretty strong. So, yeah. any quarterback, present or past, that you want to or that you would like to say, I sacked him. Mm -hmm. Ooh, Dan Marino. Yeah. Who's your favorite athlete yeah, as a kid? Yeah, that'd be cool. Favorite athlete? Career? Favorite athlete as a kid? Yep. I've got, a, I, I've got a couple. Can I say a couple? You can say a couple. Okay, all right. Uh, man, Sue. Let's go. T.O., Chad Johnson, <laughs> Marvin well, Harrison. What's up with the receivers? Yeah, I, was, I was all about I wanted to catch the ball. I had dreams of becoming a receiver. That never happened though. <laughs> why not? Did you not have the hands for it or you well, why not? Ooh, well, early on I didn't have the hands, but in kind of but in high school I finally got got there around like my junior year or so. So I had about it wasn't nothing special, but like eight touchdowns, four hundred and twenty-five yards, four hundred and fifty or so. So that was about it. <laughs> All right, here's a good one. Well, I don't know. Maybe your girlfriend doesn't need to be around, but celebrity crush. Celebrity crush. Um, mm, you know, everybody says you have one, um, but for me, nobody really. Uh, I mean, I was a, like, I'll say back in the day, I had a crush on uh, like Jessica Alba, like back in the day when I was younger. That's a good one. Yeah. Way back, way back in the day. Uh, yeah. Most most prized possession. Way back. <laughs> Most prized possession. Oh, golly. Well, technically, technically, uh, it's not mine, but it's my baby niece, though. <laughs> That's the most prized possession <laughs> that I have. Well, you know, that my sister and her husband have, but I claim myself up in there, too, though. <laughs> Uncle Wit, right? All right. Mm -hmm. Two more. Best piece of advice you've ever received? Best piece of advice that I've ever received. Um, mm, 
I'd say got it. Uh, what best best advice? Uh, it was from my dad. You got to be able to smell the roses, man. Just relax. Can't do everything. Um, I was working like really, really hard now, like down to the bones. Uh, when like sometime uh, like in the middle of my career, and uh, he just seen the stress in my face, so he just told me, "Yo, son, look, not gonna get anywhere anytime fast. Anytime fast, you got to really be able to relax and smell the roses." So that's why. Good advice. So not that there's any uh, end in sight here. You've got a long career still ahead of you, but when it's all said and done, career, end of life, whatever, how do you want to be remembered? I want to be remembered. Let's see. Size just being, you know, consistent, great player. Um, I just want to be able to be remembered as uh, somebody who is just loving and caring for uh, a lot of people. Um, just showing just, you know, enough grace and forgiveness and, uh, you know, just um, somebody who was a man of the people. That's it. That's it. Man of the people. All right. Well, you stay safe. Um, we appreciate your time and we're looking forward to seeing you out there on the field. Hopefully oh, soon. Yeah, I appreciate it. You too. Yeah, right. I know. <laughs> Thanks, Whit. All right. Take care. No problem. All right. Thank you so much, Whitney Merciless. And as I mentioned at the top of the show, our partnership with the Houston Outlaws, hashtag gaming together. We have been encouraging family, friends, anyone who's hanging out at home, spending time together to send in your videos, whether it's playing board games, whether it's uh, video games, whatever it is, send them to us. We will show you on this show our favorites. And here are this week's. I'm gonna beat. I'm gonna beat Spree in Tic Tac Toe. <laughs> I'm rowing the board. Okay. You're the you're the cross. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Owning hard. <laughs> I won! <laughs> you're going the wrong way! You're going the wrong way! You're going the wrong way! No! No! Please. Not like this! No! No, just What do you mean leave you alone? You're gonna jump off the water! No, 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 no! No! No, you're going the wrong way! <laughs> no! We're dead! We died! Are you kidding me? Yeah. Are you kidding me? All right, remember, upload your 30 second videos to outlaws.gg slash gaming together and show us how much fun you and your friends are having gaming together. And hopefully you will see it right here next week. All right, again, thank you for joining us. That's gonna do it for this week's episode. Next week, Alex Bregman from the Houston Astros is in the house with a very surprise special guest. All right, stay home, stop the spread, and save lives.